To understand the possible implications of a Eurozone collapse, we can try to look back in history. A general and very important point is that there has never been a currency union which lasted without a corresponding fiscal union. That said, Europe has had two monetary unions which lasted a fair while. The first of those was called the Latin Monetary Union, and that ran from 1865 to 1927. The founding nations were France, Belgium, Italy, and Switzerland. Eventually it collapsed because some of the member nations tried to inflate their currencies too much. There was also the Scandinavian Monetary Union, which started in 1873 and ended more or less with the advent of World War I. Another possible example is the collapse of the USSR, which then became the collapse of what was called CIS, and this at the same time meant the collapse of the ruble area. This was accompanied by severe contractions in employment and output, but it's hard to separate how much of this was due to the collapse of the ruble area and how much was due to the more general collapse of communism. History shows two recent currency divorces, if I may call them that, which actually went fairly well. One of those was Slovenia leaving what is now former Yugoslavia. The other was Slovakia and the Czech Republic. And in both cases, there was a move toward a separate currency without a major financial crisis. But of course, these were different. There were not solvency issues at stake. These did not happen in the aftermath of financial collapse, but rather it was well known this was happening for some autonomous political reason. Another interesting case is to look at the dismemberment of the Austro-Hungarian Empire after World War I. That was pulled apart, and some of the constituent parts moved to having separate currencies. There was a lot of economic and financial volatility at the time. Again, it's a little hard to tease out how much of this was due to the changing of the currencies and how much was it due to the fact that simply it was a bad time in that region. To read more on these episodes, I recommend the two readings listed below. I don't actually consider those particular earlier historical examples to be close parallels to the current Eurozone. If I had to pick one instance, it would be the nation of Argentina between the years 1999 and 2002. During those years, Argentina experienced a financial crisis. They had insolvent banks, they had capital flight, and they had a government which was, to some extent, confiscating individual bank accounts. During those years, the Argentine economy contracted by about 20%, as is conventionally measured, although I would stress we probably don't have very good numbers on that episode. One thing I would note is that for the current Eurozone, a currency switch would be harder than it was for Argentina at that point in time, because Argentina never abolished its domestic currency. It simply pegged it to the U.S. dollar, and then it broke the peg. But once the peg was broken, there was the Argentine paper money already in place. By the way, that 20% contraction sounds severe, and it is. Uh, the good news, if you're looking for that, is in the years after the crash, in 2003, the Argentine economy grows by almost 9%. And in 2004, the Argentine economy grows by a little more than 9%. So there is considerable bounce back after a lot of fairly extreme pain. And that indeed is what I think we could expect for a member nation if it left the Eurozone today.